This is one of multiple videos discussing software-defined networking, network programmability, and network automation. In this video, we're going to discuss Mininet. I'm gonna show you how you can download Mininet, integrate it with GNS3, and build OpenFlow networks using Mininet. So what I'll do actually at this point is bring a Windows PC into the topology. So under GNS3 preferences, under VMware VMs, I'm going to bring my Windows 10 PC into the topology. I'm going to allow GNS3 to override network cards. So here's my Windows VM. And I'll connect the Windows PC to my Open vSwitch switch. So in addition, I replaced my built-in GNS3 switch with an Open vSwitch switch. But I notice a marked improvement in booting and configuration of the ODL controller once I had rebooted the system. So I'll log into Windows and I'll connect to the controller 192.168.122 and it's using 42 as its IP address. 8181 is the port number index.html. So here's my open daylight prompt. I'll log in with the username of admin and admin. And as you can see, the topology is showing up as quite a large topology, but it is displaying a lot better on my Windows PC than it was on my Firefox device in GNS3. So there's a topology of 100 switches. What I'll do is shut down Firefox so that I'm using the Windows PC. So again, 100 switches running in Mininet. What I'll do is exit out of Mininet to shut that topology down. So what we should see is the topology will disappear from open daylight. So when you use the command sudo mn help, you can see that there are various topologies available. So as an example, we've got a single switch. 100 switches back to back is just ridiculous. So let's rather do a single switch with 48 ports. And I'll do a ping all reload the topology in open daylight. And notice there is our single open flow switch and we've got 48 PCs connected to that. Now the interface in ODL isn't necessarily very nice. It's expected that third party applications make this interface look better. All we're doing here is learning how to get open flow running between Mininet and the controller. So let's use a single switch, but only configure four ports. Before I do that, let's run Wireshark between the Ubuntu Open Daylight controller and the switch so that we can capture traffic. So now when I start my switch, Notice I see TCP information and scrolling down, I see open flow information. So what I'm gonna do now is filter for open flow version four, which is open flow 1.3. So what you can see here as an example is the switch sending a hello message to the controller. Here's the controller replying back to the switch. We see the controller 
asking for features from the switch, switch replying with features such as the fact that it doesn't support spanning tree at the moment. There are barrier requests, barrier replies, there's role information. I cover some of these messages in more detail in other videos, so I won't bore you going through this. But notice here's an example, we've got port description information, so we've got port three, we've got port one, we've got port two, port four, and a local management port on the switch. Now as mentioned and as demonstrated in other videos, we can use Open vSwitch within GNS3 to create individual OpenFlow switches. What is nice about Mininet, however, is you can quickly create large topologies by using just a single command. So sudo mn hyphen help once again. Let's try a different topology. So let's try a tree topology. So I'll do a tree with a fan out with a depth equal to three and a fan out equal to three. Reload the controller. That's what it looks like. Tree topology, this is the core switch or central switch. It has three switches connected to it because we did fan out three and the depth is one, two, three. So each switch connected to the core switch has three switches connected to it. And if we do a ping all, what we should see is that there are hosts connected to each of the leaf switches or edge switches. And in this case, we've got three hosts connected to those leaf switches. So let's do one more. And I'll set the fan out to four. Now my CPU on my PC has gone up. So be careful, you may end up using a lot of processing resources when doing it this way. But notice there's an example with a fan out of four, depth of three. Or let's do a fan out of four, depth of five. Again, be careful with this topology. You can build a very, very big topology very quickly. Notice I've already got to 625 host devices in this topology. So just by typing that one command, I've created a topology with 600 odd PCs and a whole bunch of switches. It's taking Mininet a while to build this topology. My Mininet VM only has one gig of RAM and is not using a lot of CPU. If you wanna build a very large topologies, allocate a lot of RAM and CPU to your Mininet VM and to your controller. So the network is still being configured. Be careful again with tree topologies. With that single command, I configured a network with 156 switches and 600 host devices. Those switches now need to contact the controller and the controller needs to learn the connections between all those switches. So in this example, even though I'm seeing my switches on the OpenFlow controller, it's struggling to start up the topology. So I'll end it here. You need to make sure that you have enough RAM and CPU power to run such large topologies. So be careful with the tree command that you don't create a large topology and then it hangs like in this example. So that was an example of how to integrate Mininet with GNS3. I've also integrated a Windows PC, a Docker container running Open Daylight, and a Firefox GUI. I also showed you how to capture OpenFlow messages within this topology. GNS3 makes these kind of setups very, very easy. You can link Mininet to a physical network 
or a GNS3 network if you want to. But that was a simple example of how to use Mininat to build topologies within GNS3. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I wish you all the very best.